In this video I'm going to show you guys how to set up a spigot server for Minecraft 1.14.2. So if you're new to the channel at all, we do a lot of time lapses and tutorials just like these, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. Anyway, getting on to the main tutorial, the first thing you're going to want to do is go into the description of the video and click on the first link which is going to get you to this spigot download page. Now if you're looking at this in the future you're going to have a lot more versions and yeah as you can see there's quite a lot of versions. Well today we're going to be doing the 1.14.2 install so you just want to click on this version and click on download. This will then take you to another page where it says you're about to download and I'll say spigot and then just click on that one and that will then start downloading. While we're doing this we're going to set up a folder so it's well you basically need a folder in order for all of your files to go into. So um, yeah, I've got on my D drive, which is my second hard drive, it's, I've got a SSD and I've got a normal hard drive, that's why I've got those two, because I know somebody got confused before. Um, I do have that and I've got a Minecraft local server folder, I just try and keep it a little bit neat. So I've got these 1.14, 1.14.1 which I need to decommission. So anyway, what we've got here, uh, we're going to create a new folder in here, we're going to do 1.14.2, I know, <laughs> really good naming convention, but it keeps it simple. Um, so while that's been done already, this is now finished downloading and you might get a warning like this, especially if you're using Chrome, which says this type of file can harm your computer. Do you want to keep spigot 1.14.2.jar anyway? This is a common kind of, um, not issue, it's more of a, an error message that comes up. Just press on keep. The reason being that .exe files and .jar files, they, get they can actually make changes to your computer um, and because of that, you know, people that wanted to create a virus, if they did want to create a virus, would probably use one of those two to do it. Um, but I can assure you guys, I've been using Bucket for, well, Bucket for years, and I've been using Spigot for years. So you don't need to worry about that at all, as long as you use the official site. So always make sure of that. There's a lot of dodgy ones online, uh, which is why <laughs> I've given you guys the exact link and not just said, go find it yourselves. So anyway, what we need to do next is we're going to open up that folder that we've created. We're going to go onto the side here, and we're going to do show in folder. Now, if you're on another browser, you might just have to go directly to your downloads. And from there, we're going to just drag this into that folder there. So we've now get rid of the downloads because we don't need that anymore. Get rid of it. So we've just got a spigot type file in a folder. Well, that's not really much of a server. So what do we actually need to do next? Um, we need to actually run this with Java. Now, by default, my machine is set up. If you go into properties of the file, you can see it will open with the Jana, Java um platform SE binary. Uh, if you guys have, for example, it running with WinRAR, which is a really, really common problem that you guys have reported to me, you can actually use OpenWiv. So if you right click on it and do OpenWiv, you should then see the Java platform binary. If you don't see that, go on to choose another app. And then if you don't see this in, if you click this more apps uh, button first, if you don't see this in here, you can do look for another app on your PC. That will then take you straight to your program files. Now you should already have Java installed at this point. If you don't, Go and grab that, pause the video, go and download Java, Java 8, run that, install it, get that all working, um, and then hopefully it'll pick it up automatically. If not, you can then point it to it. So that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to go to Java. Now I've got Java 8 and 7, so I'm going to go for 8. Always go for the higher version. Uh, most stuff is now using 8. Within here, you'll have a bin folder. And then from in here, you'll see a couple different EXEs. So executable, executive, uh, executive files, whatever they're called. I can't really remember. Good God, that's terrible. Anyway, you want the Java W.exe, and just to prove that this works, I'm just going to do open on here. Now, you do have to run it once, so um, you have to run it once. This will then go away, and it'll do some files, and it'll create some files, and you need to be patient with this, because um, already I got caught out with this. It took a little bit longer than I was expecting. I was thinking, hmm, it's broken, but actually it's not. So let's play the waiting game. Let that just run it for a couple, kind of probably about a minute or so, and I'll catch you guys when it's done. All right, so one thing I forgot, although I did open with, I didn't actually double click on it. So make sure that you do double click on it. That just really confused me quite a bit. And um, yeah, then we're just going to have to wait. And it shouldn't take that long, actually, in order for it to do its stuff. And it should start appearing, or some files should, should start appearing. And there we go. So what you guys should have is something that looks like this. If it has got stuck for whatever reason, go on to Task Manager. There's a quick way of doing this. You can go on Control, Shift, and also Escape. Uh, and then you should be able to see Java running down here. I haven't actually got it running because mine's completed. Uh, but if you did need to do that, you can then you know, right-click, do End Tasks like you do with... I can just get off Discord if you want to. Um, but, you know, do it that way if you want to, you know, to end that task. So what you should now have is... 
the uh, basically a EULA. We need to open this up. I'm going to be opening this with Notepad because most likely you guys haven't got um, something like uh, Notepad++. That's what I use a lot. And you'll notice this now. I do have to recommend that you guys go and check out the link which is in here. Go and read the EULA and if you're happy with it, then do true. And it's not that I have to say that, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, do true and then you can do uh, save on that. Uh, it's just a new kind of thing for it. The next thing we've got is the server.properties. So if we open with Notepad, then we've got the server properties. Now I'm going to just, I'm going to keep the font the same actually because it should be a little bit clearer for you guys. So a couple of different things is going to, you know, like here is going to be the default settings of the actual server. So, you know, what game mode you want it. I want it as creative. I'll leave a link in the description to the main Minecraft page, which explains all of these settings and what you can actually do with them. Um, you know, it's, you know difficult um, is easy. Well, I'm going to do mine to peaceful. I'm a creative build it as you guys probably already know. Um, spawn monsters to false. We get that there. Um, a load of other stuff here. Max, you know, max players, for example, you can set that. Max world size. Um, server port. Now, if you do run multiple servers on your own machine, make sure to change the port. Otherwise, you will get an error when you start up the server. I will show you guys how to capture those errors uh, so you can actually see what's going on. Spawn animals true. Whitelist false. Uh, if you do just want a whitelist, generate structures doesn't really matter. Um, another couple of things that people have said is how do I actually change or how do I bring in one of my local worlds. I'll show you guys that in a second if you're interested in that kind of stuff. And uh, also how do I make like a flat world. That is the level type. Now again in the link that I'll put to the main Minecraft page you guys can check out all of these settings and what they actually do. Um, you don't really need to actually do anything in here. It's just useful to know what is in there and how you change it and it does exist and all that kind of stuff is really useful. Now with the default world which is this level name here if it doesn't exist in this folder it will create it which makes a lot of sense. If it's already there though it will then use that one. So we're going to make it so that it creates a brand new fresh world which is absolutely fine so if we do save and close and that should be pretty good. Now you can just double click on this file and start up a server and you can technically join it from there. However, if you want a console for it, for it you actually need to um, basically build a batch file to do that. So I know that a couple of people did this where they had double clicked on this and because of that it had started running a server and they actually didn't want that. They actually wanted to do the next step but they would already done it anyway by mistake or whatever. Um, the way that you have to close it is to go on again these background processes, go on the Java binary uh, thingamajiggy here and do end task. So there we go, that will then end it. Um, and also it's created a load of files as well as you probably saw which is uh, I think it did that just before it died actually which is absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start up a 1.14.2 uh, version of Minecraft. I use multi MC. I find it really really cool to actually use and uh, I, I think it's just a fantastic job. It's just what I use uh, and while we're doing that and waiting we're going to be creating a batch file. So this is to get the console log and also it helps us if there's any errors in the server itself. So what we'll do here is we're going to just right click in the uh, like white space, do new, then text document and we're just going to call it whatever we want because it doesn't matter, we're going to be changing this. Um, then what you can do is right click on that and we're going to do open with notepad. It's just because I know a lot of you guys will have that and we're going to basically be writing a little command line. So this is going to be Java, it means run it with Java, dash and x, uh, whoops, not x, big x, m, s, and for example, do 512M, that's uh, 512 megabytes of minimum RAM. Then leave a space, do, uh, and, and this will be in the description by the way, guys, as well. You don't have to copy this, <laughs> I'll just explain what it does. So you've got uh, big X, M, X, and then we're going to go 1G. So it's going to be a minimum of uh, 500 meg, essentially, to run, and a maximum of 1 gig. And we can do dash jar, and this is where we actually say spigot dash 1.14.2 jar. And then we're going to do dash O and true. So that's the output as true is what I understand it as. And I spelt spigot wrong but that's absolutely fine. Actually let's leave that in there. Um, we're going to see what happens when we actually get this wrong. Now what you need to do is you need to then do file and then save as. And then on here save as type make sure that you do all files because I know a couple of people didn't do that which doesn't make it back file. And then you manually change. When you do all files um, it essentially allows you to do your own extension onto the back of it. So you can do, do start.bat and then just do there, yeah. Leave that there, close that off, and we can delete the old text file. So now what happens if we start this? Oh, 
it goes up, it, it comes up, and it disappears. What the hell's happening, right? So this is a common kind of thing. You know, I know why it's happened. It's because I've spelt it spigoty. But um, this will happen for various different reasons. If it comes across an error, it just closes. You can capture it by writing another line, and it's a at sign, and then pause. So what this does is it adds another line to say, don't close the window until you get a key press. <laughs> so it's a nice little trick to actually get in there. Um, and yeah, as you can see there, it then says unable to access jar file, spigoty, blah, 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 blah. And I go, oh yeah, it's because I've spelt it wrong. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, but you can get other issues. If you've already got a server running on that port, you'll also get an error. So uh, I guess we can actually do that as well. Because uh, I know that was one issue that a couple people had. So I'm just going to save that. Um, so for example, if we had double clicked on this by accident, we don't see a console going on. I'll just let that run through. There we go. And then if we uh, ended up going start.bat. Oh, look. I oh, know it actually hasn't errored. For whatever reason, it hasn't errored. Probably because the other server hasn't started up. If you do want to interrupt the console, by the way, you hold down on control and C, and that will then do it. And then you can terminate the batch job and say yes. So that can actually get you out of that as well. Or you can just press the X. Um, but what should actually be happening right now, there you go, I can see other stuff appearing as well. The spigot itself is running without a console. Um, if we go into Minecraft 1.14 anyway, we can go into multiplayer. And today I'm just going to do a direct connect. You can do add server, of course, I'm sure you guys know this already. But direct connect, and you can just put in a local host or one word. I don't think it even matters if it needs to be in uppercase or lowercase, but uh, I've always done it in lowercase for whatever reason. So if you join that server, we should be joining a server that doesn't have a console, uh, which is interesting. So we'll go back and we'll run that file in a second. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over how you actually get a local file in there if you wanted to. So there we go. So at least we're actually on the server, even though we haven't got the console. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect from that. And we're going to have to kill it. This is the other problem with um, doing it via just using the Java file. So if we go on to here, find our Java. There it is. Right, it's right in front of me. So there we go. End task on that. So let's try it with the start to bat. I know we were going to do something else and I've completely forgotten about it. Um, but it will say, yes, yeah, server will start up in 20 seconds. That's probably why we didn't do it. I know I was going to do that to show you guys what it says with the um, uh, if the port's already in use. To be fair, the error log's pretty good anyway. It will tell you that kind of stuff. Um, so there you go. Let this start running. Shouldn't take that long. There we go. So it's all started up and you can see everything that then got logged in there, which is always good. So we know that at least this one has been successful. If you guys do have any issues, let me know in the... Uh, comment section below it'd be really cool so uh, what we're gonna do now yeah we're gonna just connect, direct connect to it just to prove that it works but say for example we want to put one of our own so oh, wow um, so say for example we wanted to put one of our own saves in there uh, I quite like this actually this is quite a nice looking place uh, bit of a shame that I'm gonna get rid of it but oh well um, so the way that you'll do that is you need to shut down the server so you can just type in here you can type stop and that will safely kind of you know shut everything down let everything go and do everything like that. Because I've got that app pause at the end, it will do the press any key to continue, which is fine by me. Um, just in case it had any errors at the end, uh, you can just leave that app pause in there, or you can remove it. It doesn't. It really doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to migrate something. So I've got my world here. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to delete the world here. I'm going to ignore the never and the uh, end. Uh, you should really copy them all over. I'm just going to copy that in there, and then all you need to do is just start up that start dot bat again and that's literally it it's as simple as that in order to migrate it in if your world is not called world uh, all you'd need to do is go on your server dot properties and i've got that in notepad plus plus at the minute um, and you just need to change the level name into the new world and that's it it's as simple as that to get that in there uh pretty damn snazzy and very very cool uh, in order to get that going you know not not too much to worry about at all so there we go so that should then be loading up. I think that already almost has anyway. Almost loaded up. Um, yeah, so with a spigot server, of course, you do get a lot of plugins. If there's any specific plugins that you guys want me to go over, do let me know. Um, there is an absolute ton of them, and they are very, very cool. I'm not too sure about all the ones for 1.14.2 yet, uh, as it's only really just come out. But I'm sure that most of them are going to be still working on it. Um, but that is pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. I mean... It's pretty nice and simple. I mean, the only thing I really want to show you guys is that the world does migrate. So I'm just going to wait for this to load and show you guys that. There we go. So, has it worked? Has my migration worked? <laughs> Which is quite a good thing because I needed to do this anyway. And I have no idea where I am. Like, oh, there we go. I can jump. 
So it has worked. I'm just in a totally different place than I expected to be. So that's different. <laughs> I don't know. I'll find out anyway. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I'm not sure why my spawn is different. I think it's because I've spawned in the jungle rather than in the uh, place that I actually was building. But that doesn't really matter for me. Uh, I'm sure I'll find it in no time because I flew around quite a bit. Um, anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Let me know if there's any plugin tutorials that you guys want me to cover. Um, and I'll get onto those because I'm pretty interested in doing those because uh, I seem to be doing quite good on the views. So, uh, yeah, pretty good. But anyway, if you like this video, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.